Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Welcome into our study, Praising God Through Prayer and Worship. We are currently in day 139 of studying Psalms. Um, that means that some of our Psalms, we have taken two together and some we have uh, split apart into two days because today we're on uh, 112, Psalm 112. And so I'm so happy to have Arlene with us in the room today. And uh, of course, she's going to be my reader. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Let's go to prayer. Heavenly Father, you have been so good to us in the interim time since we have been together. We praise you. We glorify you. We thank you for all of the goodness uh, that you have poured out on us, for the fellowship that we had uh, for those of us who were in our churches, uh, worshiping together with other believers after so long time together uh, apart. And um, Father God, thank you so much for the encouragement that we are to one another, for your word, which shows us our own true nature, but it also shows us your nature and your character and uh, all of the things that we need to live in a way that is uh, beneficial to ourselves and which produces glory and worship for you. So Father God, uh, walk us through this study of Psalm 112 today, and may it be a blessing on everyone who participates. In Jesus I pray, amen. Okay, my friend, read away. Oh, oh, I lost you. You're muted somehow. Okay, Psalm there. 112. Go ahead. No, are you muted again? I'm muted? I'm muted. Oh, my goodness. Pardon us, ladies and gentlemen, while we just have... A little time. <laughs> okay, my microphone says it is working. Your microphone says it is on. But you're not hearing me? I can't hear you. No. Oh, there. We're back again? Okay, yep. you're back again. Okay, try again. Okay. Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. Blessed is a person who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments. His descendants will be mighty on the earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Wealth and riches are in his house, and his righteousness endures forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright. He is gracious, compassionate, and righteous. It goes well for a person who is gracious and lends. He will maintain his cause in judgment. For he will never be shaken. The righteous will be remembered forever. He will not fear bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is firm. He will not fear, but will look with satisfaction on his enemies. He has given freely to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted in honor. The wicked will see it and be vexed. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked will perish. Well, our instructions in the text today give um are a little bit specific it says read and mark the psalm as you've done before and then we're going to look at what is true about the man or woman who fears the lord and by contrast what is true about the wicked and then the question is how do these two kinds of people relate well when we were doing our study uh last time uh when liz was in the room we were both uh, exulting and delighting in the style of the psalm itself because, of course, we've come through those, oh, I'm so oppressed, kind of, oh, down things, help me, Lord, or the ones that are imprecatory saying, I'm being persecuted by this wicked person, you know, get him, God, and do this, that, and the other thing. But then here we are in, these, in this segment, seems like, that we're saying, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Okay, so let's go from the top again. Now, my version read a little bit differently than yours, but that's okay. So praise the Lord. So I'm going, so that's an exclamation at the top. Uh, 
And it seems to me mm, that this psalm is divided up into three segments. The first segment goes from um, verse 1 to 6, and then 7 to 9, and then verse 10 stands alone. And that becomes obvious when we look at the subject matter. Okay, so praise the Lord. And then I have a way of marking blessed. How blessed is the man, which man? Which man is blessed according to this? Oh, are you not hearing me again? <laughs> oh, she's having trouble with her connections. Okay. She'll be back. All right. How blessed is the man who fears the Lord? We saw that in the other one. Here she comes back again. <laughs> oh, the internet. <laughs> Anyway, so how blessed is the man who fears the Lord? And what else does he do? He greatly, and I'm going to mark this. Uh, where did I put that pen? Hmm. He greatly delights in what? In his commandments. Mm -hmm. Isn't that funny, you know? Uh, that, that contrast that with most people don't like to, they don't like law, <laughs> except when it benefits them, you know, but it, when it's something that they have to obey, they don't, 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 uh, like it. Oh yes. Yeah, so his commandments, that's God's commandments. All right. So what is the result of the, what is the blessing of the person who delights in God's commandments? What does it say here? Verse 2. He'll have mighty descendants. Mm hmm And it says the generation of the upright. Okay, the generation of the upright will be, and there's blessed twice. Again, will be blessed What a contrast to the way we think about things or what we have been uh, indoctrinated to think about things in this world. His descendants will be mighty on earth. Now, let me see. Okay, so it says his seed. Okay, so that's another reference to seed, like not seeds, but seed. And um, will be mighty on earth. Okay, so that is, uh, or in the land, that could be translated that. Um, in our culture, we are not, we are, we have been indoctrinated not to um, have many children. So there's very few people who have many children because of the indoctrination that we have had that says that mm -hmm. there's not enough food and not enough space and not enough goods to go around in God's green earth. Mm -hmm. we're still being indoctrinated in that. And that's what people are being, um, children are being told, Ooh, there's not enough to go around and that someone has to micromanage this. Anyway, I'm not talking about that anymore. The generation of the upright. So I'm mar marking upright. So it's, it's, it's very specific at, as to who will be blessed. And so we see the one who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commandments and um, who are upright. Okay, what do we see about them as well in terms of blessing here? In verse 3, mm -hmm. wealth and riches are in his house. And what else? Um, his righteousness endures forever. That is something. I don't think we think about that very often, that, that the that righteousness endures forever. And uh, we have learned as we study through the New Testament that uh, there is no one righteous, not even one. And all of our, we learned this from Isaiah that all in the cross references that all our righteousness are, are as filthy rags. And so it's not our own righteousness that we're talking about. 
here. It is the righteousness of Christ imputed to us by belief. So Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him. It was reckoned to him. It was considered to him. It was accounted to him as righteousness in God's sight. And it's the same for those who have believed on Christ, believe in Christ, believe Christ (laughs) and believe the gospel. Yeah, that that righteousness is imputed to us from God, by God, because of Christ. Uh, His righteousness endures forever. Okay, so what else do we see? This is, uh, this would, uh, okay, you know, when you go through and you have these little precious nuggets that kind of um, stick with you, this one is a nugget for me. What's the next one in verse 4? Light shines in the darkness for the upright. Mm. There are, you know, this world that we have is pretty dark. It Mm -hmm. always has been for the upright. So the upright, I always mark that as if it's the righteous as well. My mark. Light arises in the darkness. And aren't people, haven't people always been looking for illumination right Mm -hmm. and the so many sources of seeking that and um yeah it's a little hard because the language of the day gets really sticky because there's people who are seeking illumination in um in sources apart from god so Mm -hmm. they're seeking it through um what was it? Oh, what what was that called? The Renaissance. You know, when people are seeking... Um, um, New Age. Yes. Yeah. But even apart from that, in, in man's um, uh, reasoning, right? The age of reason. Yeah, enlightenment. And uh, and also, also, people are looking for um, a spiritual experience of enlightenment. And, uh, you know, this is, it makes it very hard to speak with people, I think, in the world sometimes, because the language, the definitions are confusing. Mm-hmm. Then this is saying here that well, light, it, go ahead. When everybody determines what is the right light for them, then they have no reason to listen to what you say is right or what the actual source of the true light is. Mm-hmm. They don't want to hear that because they believe they can just come up with their own light that makes sense for them mm-hmm. and justifies everything they personally would like to call light. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So that makes it hard for discourse, really, in a sense. Sure. Um, and, um, but, you know, you can never argue someone into the kingdom of God. <laughs> No. <laughs> or and you really can't persuade them because they're persuaded of something already. So we do know that mm-hmm. we we pray for the Holy Spirit of God to do his work, which is to convict the world of sin and righteousness and also to make plain every word that Jesus spoke. So mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit makes God's word plain and that's how we pr- pray for people that we love who are who are going down a counterfeit road. Um, yeah. Okay, so dark, light arises in the darkness for the upright. And what about his character as a result or his uh, actions? They are gracious, compassionate, and righteous. Now, you could argue that someone in the New Age movement, following New Age or Eastern mysticism, um, could be gracious and compassionate and do righteous things. Mm-hmm. You could argue that. Yeah. And I'm sure you know that they would, that those in that, I'm not criticizing them by any means. Um, I came out of that. I came out of that into God's light. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I'm always counseled that uh, we have in scripture that even Satan himself disguises himself as an angel of light. And so, mm-hmm. you know, 
this whole idea of counterfeit can be very deceiving because that's Satan's thing is deceiving. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do we learn also then about this person who fears the Lord and delights in his commandments in verse 5? It goes well for them. And he will maintain his cause in judgment. Mm Mm-hmm. There's something else here that in my text, uh, maybe not, um, I'm going to come back to the maintain his cause and judgment. It's well with the man. It goes well for the man who is gracious and lends. So, Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, here's the thing I keep, often I get in my mind what Jesus said, you know, if you're going to, if, if you're going to give something, if you're going to lend something, make it a gift instead don't expect something in return. Mm-hmm. And um, that were that was my uh, that was my um, what do you call it? My version Model. of what it said. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. That if you that that you know, and if he asks you for your coat, give him your shirt too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the person who is upright is gracious and compassionate and righteous. So we haven't really talked yet about righteous and uprightness. What would you, what what would your uh, definition, according to scripture, be of righteous? I'm trying to check the original. Oh, well, good. Um, it's taking a while to load. My internet is not good today. I can't get it. Okay. It just times out. Okay, I can go over. I can go over on mine. I'm not on Wi-Fi. Okay, so we need Blue Letter Bible, right? I don't have my keyboard here. Fortunately, when I put in BLU, it comes right up. Okay, but I want to have um, Psalm 112. Go. Uh, Okay, as well with the man who is gracious, he will maintain his cause in judgment. Gracious and compassionate and righteous. Okay, so that's in verse 4. So, for the upright is Yassar. Pardon my terrible. And righteous is Sadiq. So that uh, he will this the original is translated more as he will guide his affairs with discretion. Oh. Mishpat. Okay. Discretion is m- mispat. Yes, okay. So guiding your affairs with discretion. That's that's wisdom and discernment, isn't it? Um, mm-hmm. that means not getting involved in bad deals or with bad people, <laughs> but also mm-hmm. looking to make your, make your, um, affairs fruitful and prospering, um, whoever you need to prosper. Let me see mm-hmm. here. So where we're looking at, okay, I'm looking at Sadiq and that is just lawful righteous in government in your own cause in conduct and character and as justified and vindicated by god it also says right correct lawful so uh mm-hmm. not being thugs and thieves <laughs> okay back i come here all right he will maintain his cause in judgment. Oh. Hmm. What is that? Maintains his cause in judgment. Well, that's the part that I was saying. Oh, he oh, will oh. guide his affairs with discretion. Yes. Okay. 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 Good. Um. Right. Proverbs 1 4. This word discretion is in nine other verses, but I want to tell you what Proverbs 1 4 says. Oh. Uh, to, can you hear me? Yep. 
Oh, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man, knowledge and discretion. And then in Proverbs 2.11, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. Mm. And the next verse is wisdom, sound wisdom and discretion. So judgment is uh, interpreted here with, with knowledge and discretion. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Interesting how uh, different translators um, make the turn of phrase. It's good to have where the mm-hmm. other where the word is used elsewhere, providing context yeah. for for that. Yeah, and uh, that is the rule mm-hmm. of thumb for what for this kind of inductive study too, that context is king. Uh, mm-hmm. Because we always examine a word in a phrase, in a sentence, in a paragraph in a chapter, in a book, in the whole counsel of God, so that we don't, that we are, you know, we are rightly applying what it is that we're learning. Good. Okay, so now, what does it say in verse 6? For he will never be shaken. The righteous Mm. will be remembered forever. Mm. Isn't that true? So, you know, in history, you know, the one who has uh, stood, stood, stood firm for a righteous cause or who has been generous or, you know, these people are memorialized every bit as much as, you know, the Bonnie and Clydes of the world, you know, the wicked people. He will never Mm -hmm. be shaken. The righteous will be remembered. I'm writing that righteous remembered. Oh, and I use that special thing for remember. In the psalm before, we were talking about the Lord. In verse uh, 4, it says, He has made His wonders to be remembered. So God is remembered by His righteous deed, and His righteous deeds are, His mighty works are remembered. Mm -hmm. Righteous. He will never be shaken. Okay, and and here in my sidebar, it says, uh, um, The righteous... Will have a, uh, will re be. Uh, sorry, will have a re eternal remembrance. For an eternal remembrance, that's what it says. Okay, the mm-hmm. I just all right. Now we're in a. Oh, if we're gonna, uh, if we're going to um. Title this segment. I'm just gonna say the the blessings of a righteous man, or person. The blessings on a righteous person. So, if if this was um, going to um, provide an example for us to follow, or or a um, some kind of. Uh, pattern yeah for us what would you say that would be if it was to be an encouragement for us today um it's reminding me of the verse to not be weary and well-doing just remember these promises and that it's um, its benefits are eternal mm-hmm. that the weary problem. and well doing don't get weary has the has a little addendum that goes uh, for in due time mm. in due time you you'll reap right mm. mm-hmm. and I'm not sure what the exact words are but I know that there's that idea that uh, that uh, it it it's inspiring patience right in in mm-hmm. continuing to do good yes mhm to me there's yeah, when a couple... you think go ahead with just that when you think of it in terms of uh, remembered forever um i am thinking that the only place that's eternal is heaven so that's where it counts and that's where um you're having impact for the kingdom 
mm-hmm. and not just now. So that's encouraging. Mm-hmm. Well, because I was going to ask, you know, what do you think about this wealth and riches? Does that necessarily mean in this particular plane or sphere? Yeah, or does it mean physical, does it always necessarily mean physical goods? Well, it can be both, but I think, um, you know, to have the wealth and riches in your house, that that's what you're going to draw from when you're gracious and lending. Mm. You can't pour from an empty cup, <laughs> as they say. Yeah, exactly. So, Um, the wealth and riches are for you to disperse righteously and to be that light in giving because giving is loving, Mm. a way of loving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah, because we're always, we're sowing into the eternal always. Whatever it is we're sowing into, we're sowing, whether you, whether it's in uh, raising or ministering to children, whether it is caring for the elderly, whether it is sharing your earthly goods, your services, your whatever, you're always sowing into eternity. Mm-hmm. And that's not to say that the benefits don't come here because yet, like you said, you can't pour from an empty cup. And uh, I think the Lord is really... Uh, glad to provide for us so that we can share more Mm -hmm. so that we don't run out of for sharing Mm -hmm. Mm. so yeah so it does wealth and riches and then this is talking about gracious and righteous and and lending twice it's mentioned gracious here in uh, verse four and five Mm -hmm. mm-hmm hmm for he will never be shaken. So, you know, so, all right, let's just put, let's be a, I'm, I don't want to be a devil's advocate because he doesn't need any advocating for, but <laughs> what about the people who are feeling shaken or feeling um, lack? Of provision. Mm-hmm. What what about that? Especially I'm and I'm talking okay. So I'm talking about in the family of God. I'm talking about believers, um, because specifically that's who we are. What mm-hmm. do you think? How can that that mm-hmm. person? How can that person um, apply this to make a change in their thinking and in their and in the outcome? Well, I think there can be a short term shaking, but they have to look at the bigger picture, maybe. I don't know. It's a hard question. Gee, and wouldn't I just raise it? (laughs) (laughs) I know that personally in my life, um, I put the Lord to the test as to his promises. It's uh, funny studying the Psalms while you're studying alongside alongside another book because um, the Lord makes connections for you. And so we're studying in 1 Peter. And we are, uh, today is the last day that we are, um, that we're taking up our last lesson in that. And we're in 1 Peter 5. And the whole focus of the last two days of the workbook were about anxiety and worry. And, um, you know, how do we deal with those issues? And I think that the Lord brings us through times where we have a little bit less than we thought we'd like in order to cause us to trust him more and to be more generous. Surprisingly, it seems counterintuitive in the worldly Mm -hmm. sense, 
but I don't think it is. I think the Lord mm-hmm. uses these tests of us to to stretch our faith so we trust him more, so he can prove himself to be more trustworthy. Right. Right. I, I At least that's my experience, that um, when I have been in severe lack and, and it has caused anxiety, that I realize that I'm not supposed to be ang- anxious and to consider the lilies and the birds of the field and all of that. And, um, and to obey regardless of what it is. So, you know, if this guy, he says he's compassionate and righteous, he's gracious and lends. Well, there's a lot of things that you can do that don't involve stuff. Because we mm-hmm. have, we're all given 24 hours of time every day to do something with. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm. Let's go on. Verse um, seven. Hold on. Oh, okay. For verse five, I'm just curious um, if it means lending as um, with interest. But well, probably not because there, no. it says to be gracious. Well, we could go back to the, you could go back to the, um, you could go back to uh, the, where the law is given and it speaks specifically about that. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, um, I, I would not say that people are to be making money off of usury, which is lending money at profit. Yeah. I'm just confused of why it's lends instead of gives okay well do we have we got that up there we can go down the rabbit hole another time on that one but uh, Mm. it's because it said about maintain his cause and judgment but then it said uh direct his affairs what was it with discretion Mm -hmm. so i'm i'm just wondering if it's an idea of the talents being a good steward of the resources in such a way that you lend it, but you will receive more back and then you lend more out and you, you keep it going that way. I, I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm right here on the page. So I'm, it's, it's uh, that word that is translated lens here is 3867. Yes. And I pop it up and it says, lava, lava. Mm-hmm. Okay, and that has to do with join, lend, borrow, borrower, cleave. Okay, so it says join, be joined, to join, be joined, or attend, to join oneself to. This is getting weird now. To be joined into. Okay, so you join into a, a contract with someone. When you, when, you, when, when you lend to someone, you have a contract. You say, okay, so uh, in such and so days, you'll pay that back. Um, to borrow or lend, to cause to borrow or lend to. But it also has this idea of cleaving, joining. That's interesting. Mm. Oh, here we go. Proverbs nineteen seventeen. Mm-hmm. It says, he that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord. And ah. that which he hath given, will he pay him again? Oh, okay. Yes. So you give it to the poor, but it's like you've loaned it out and God will repay. Mm-hmm. 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 Well, okay. because who, who is our father? Yeah. He, he owns the storehouses of heaven. Yes. Right. And I think that that thought was going through my mind because I've been through that proverb, but I couldn't, it did not recall. So I'm glad you found that again for me. Yes, yeah. it's it's we give as as we as if we're giving it back to the Lord. Yeah, he's given he's given okay. us this, and then uh, he prints, presents us with someone who needs something, and we give it to them, and yeah. we might say we're lending it, but it, but it's a it's a really kind of an offering to the Lord. Okay. And for me, the understanding is that we give with no expectation of receiving back anything from the actual person. Because that's yeah. not who we're giving it to or as yeah. if it, it's for. Okay. 
So here is going, now we're going to talk about the character of the person who is doing this. What do we see in verse 7? He will not fear bad news. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. So with all of that in mind, here, here is the person who is unshakable in faith because he or she has already seen the Lord providing for them so that they can help provide for others in giving back to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And what does that produce in the person's emotions then? Um, well, peace, they're steadfast. Mm -hmm. You know, this to me, I, had for, I haven't read this psalm in a long time, but as you know, I've read through them many, 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 many times over a period of seven years. And uh, basically, you re read through the entire book of Psalms and Proverbs. If you read five psalms and a proverb every day, you, do, you go through the whole thing every month. So many months of reading. The, he will not fear evil tidings. So... You know, in this world today, if you listen to the news, which I do not, but you hear reports of it anyway, <laughs> whether or not you, you know, and uh, you hear of the plans that evil men and women have uh, for the world that they think, they don't think it's evil. They don't, they think it's perfectly good. <laughs> but having all of this characteristics in the first six verses... There's no need for us to have anxiety and fear evil tidings. Right. As, because who are we trusting in? God. Yes. And, and, and what has he already shown us? According to what we've just read before and talked about. Um. That he blesses the righteous. Mm -hmm. And that there will always be enough to do the work that he's called us to do. For me, that, mm -hmm. for me, that's it, you know, that. Trusting that he will provide for what you need in the instant you need it. Even mm -hmm. if it comes to the words, don't, don't think about when you're called up in front of Kings and whatever, was that in the book of Acts or was it before? Don't, don't, don't worry about what you're going to say because the Lord will bring it to mind in the moment that you need it. His heart is steadfast, mm -hmm. steadfast, trusting in the Lord. And verse eight. His heart is firm. He will not fear, but will look with satisfaction on his enemies. Mm. Mm. Yeah, there's a, it's a reads a little bit different in mine. His heart is upheld. So it's, you know, God's got your mm. heart in his hand, right? He's upheld. He doesn't fear. And then there's a, um, mm -hmm. in, in mine, it says, until he looks with satisfaction on his adversaries. Uh, so it's a kind of um, oh. thinking that. Time. Yeah. Th and thinking that there will come a time when you will see. See, those of, well, everybody, everybody in this world has a sense of righteousness and unrighteousness, of right and wrong, and a sense of justice that we want to see fulfilled. When you see wicked people doing wicked things and getting away with it, almost everybody gets frustrated and angry about that. And mm -hmm. rightly so, because those things are wrong and should not be done, whatever it is, whatever it happens to be, the flavor of wickedness of the day. And uh, the thing that I think frustrates a lot of people is that, well, when, God, when are you going to take care of this? When is this ever going to be made right? And this gives mm -hmm. us the sense, this gives us the sense 
in my view anyway, that there's going to come a time or we can take satisfaction that the Lord is going to look after that. Regardless of what we see going on now, the we, Lord is going to judge that. Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, so let's talk about what's going on here in verse 9 now. He, he has given freely to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted in honor. Okay, this horn thing bugs me. <laughs> I don't really get that. Hang on a second. But here, we this is again a reiteration of um, the conduct of the person. He's given freely to the poor. And then I'm going to mark righteousness because that we saw that before. His righteousness endures forever. Why did we see that in... Oh, the righteous will be remembered forever. Oh, and his, that's verse three, and his righteousness endures forever. Seems like a little bit of a refrain in a way. Mm -hmm. So in three, it's wealth and riches are in his house and his righteousness endures forever. And then he's given freely to the poor, verse nine, his righteousness endures forever. Have you got that up to know what this, this thing about horn has been coming up? Um, what does it mean, the horn? Because, of course, we have different connotations. could be a trumpet, <laughs> tuba. <laughs> uh, but I don't think that's what is his horn. That's verse 9. Karen, 7161. Okay, so it, it, it is, has the implication of strength. Well, oh, my goodness, this is confusing. So horn could be of strength figuratively, a flask container for oil, a horn of oil. Mm, okay. Oh, yeah. So you've a horn of uh, beer or something like that, too. Um, a horn as a musical instrument of horn like pro projections on the altar, which could be like animals. Oh, she disappeared again. Or of rays of life or hell. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so it says, as of an ox, a goat, or a ram, or of a horn of those animals used as a vessel for holding stuff, or of a, a, as a blowing something. Okay, so I'm going back to look at this. His horn will be exalted in honor. There she comes again. Oops. Oh, these nasty computers. <laughs> They're so naughty. Sorry. So I was just, I was just going, while you were gone, I was uh, delving into the horn. Mm -hmm. Being, re being exalted in honor. Okay, so. You got it all figured out now? Well, uh, I, not really. <laughs> Why it would be exalted in honor, I, I don't know. But it, it, it it's literally talking about like an animal horn or something that can mm -hmm. be used as a vessel or an instrument. It could even be rays of light. So, but it's literally, I mean, it comes from the root of an animal horn, like a ram's horn or something like well, that. Well, I'm thinking it might be like the shofar and maybe people would hear it and know whose it was by the sound of that particular person. Um, so they would, like being exalted in honor, it's everybody will know as well. They'll yes. hear it and they'll know. Ah, yes. Okay. So uh, a horn makes an announcement as well, right? So, doo -doo -doo -doo. Mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. good. His horn, his righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted in honor. Okay, so that's kind of an archaic terminology. <laughs> he, he's mm -hmm. not tooting his own horn. <laughs> his horn will be tooted <laughs> for him. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. All right, so that's so we see so we have seen the blessings on the man, the person who fears the Lord and delights in his commandments, which means that when you know what is right to do, you do it. And when you know what's not right to do, you don't do it. Mm -hmm. And having the having the character towards your fellow man that 
um, the, the same char- the same character as the Lord God does, compassionate and gracious. And leaving the judgment to the Lord who judges righteously, which we've seen in other Psalms and other places. Okay. Uh, Verse 10 now, we have a contrast. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I better make a little... uh... Okay, so I'm going to just write down here, the righteous don't have nothing to fear. I'm thinking for verse 10, the wicked will see it and be vexed. It's also they'll hear of it, Mm. especially if it was tooted from a horn, as you say, because the the people who were poor and who were blessed, they're going to be telling others that righteous person was a blessing to me. And then that vexes the wicked. And doesn't that also bring to mind Jesus, you know, when... Mm -hmm. uh, when they when he was being falsely accused before the religious leaders who were saying that you know he was a he that Jesus was acting wickedly and whatever and the and the people who were blessed by Christ who were healed by him says oh i don't know what you think but all i know is i was blind and now i see you know mm-hmm. i was lame yes. and now i walk i was right. demon possessed and now i'm free and mm-hmm. uh and didn't that make them cross the the religious leaders the wicked will not okay well so then i just passed judgment on those guys <laughs> the wicked will see it and be vexed but isn't that true though and i was thinking about some of the circumstances of our lives that if you are if you if you are acting in a Christ-like way, if you are living righteously and you are kind and compassionate towards other who are weaker, who have less, doesn't that make the wicked vexatious? Mm -hmm. There's something, there's something perverse about that because, you know, usually wouldn't you think that if you saw someone uh, who was receiving benefit, who was being blessed by another person, by their kindness or whatever, that you would say, oh, you know, that's admirable. That is something that we should all practice. But that is not what, you know, the wicked fallen nature of human people does. Because they become mm-hmm. en- they become envious, if, if nothing less. If nothing else, they become envious of the one who is doing the blessing because they're getting their horn tooted for them without having to toot it themselves. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But here he'll gnash his teeth. <laughs> that, that, picturing gnashing of teeth is weird and melt away. Mm-hmm. Now, what else does it say? Um, okay. So they'll be angry, vexed, that's a really great word. That's I like that word instead of just angry because angry is too generic, but vexed is kind of specific. Mm-hmm. Irritated, bugged. Mm-hmm. He mm-hmm. will gnash his teeth. And what does it say for melt away? Okay, melt away though. So there's something Psalm 58, 7. I think that we saw that before. Yeah. The desire of the wicked will perish. Uh, surprisingly, this has a reference to Job 8, verse 13. I'm not going to look it up. And also Proverbs 10, 28, and Proverbs 11, verse 7, that there are cross-references. The desire of the wicked will perish. Hmm. So I'm not sure if it, what they want is just going to go away or... well. It's because they're only desiring temporal. Everything temporal melts away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if your desire is for righteousness and eternal things, that doesn't melt away. Exactly. That's what it says in 1 Peter. I got to read that into the record because that is so, you know, that is, this is just, I love that. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm at verse 3. Who according to his great mercy has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To obtain an inheritance which is imperishable and undefiled and will not fade away. Reserved in heaven for in you. Heaven for you. You who are protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable. Imagine thinking of gold as perishable, because we don't think of gold as perishable, do we? Even though tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yes. So, yes. Yes. An eternal inherit, eternal inheritance that, uh, that we are, you know, people say, oh, what are you going to do in heaven for eternity? You're just going to sit on a cloud and play a harp. Well, I mean, an in eternal inheritance <laughs> that is not perishable or fading, right? Mm -hmm. To enjoy, that is a reward for uh, obedience and for trusting and taking the Lord at his word and doing it. There's nothing shabby about that at all. <laughs> mm -hmm. And certainly something that, you know, as we grow in wisdom and, and in maturity in our faith, um, that these things, you know, help, uh, uh, help us to um, endure some of the... Um, difficult things well all of the difficult things that we have to endure um people who are slandering and people who are persecuting and you know people who are falsely bearing false witness and people who are th stealing what we have all of that mm -hmm. we don't need to fear that we don't need to fear that well, uh, we've come to the end of our time. I think this has been a really great discussion. I'm glad you're part of it. I can't have a discussion by myself. So <laughs> <laughs> come up with these great ideas. Anyway, let's go to prayer and then we'll say goodbye to our YouTube family. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we have your word that reminds us that, that our source of everything, of goods and of life and of breath, all come from you. And that you are so intimately acquainted with all our ways that uh, you even know the number of hairs on our head. And you know how many heartbeats that you have ordained for us to have while we are living. And that we do not need to be afraid uh, when storms come because Jesus, you are in the boat with us. And that we can still be generous of our time, our treasure and talent with the people that you have brought to us to minister to, even if maybe sometimes it's as if we are uh, entertaining angels unawares. And so, Father God, I just pray that you would continue to grow in us a steadfast spirit, as it says, that we would be continuing to be gracious and compassionate and upright and that we will never be shaken. Thank you, Lord, that uh, all the good things that you have given us are not for our own use only, but to share with others along the way. And keep our hearts and minds sensitive when you have called us out, even if it seems a little strange <laughs> when you say, send, send that money, send that Go and visit that lonely person. Go and uh, bake a cake or whatever it is that you call us to do at the spur of the moment. Help us to be obedient and, and bless the person who has been crying out to you that we have not heard, but, uh, but you have been, um, we have been, that they have been crying out for you to help them. And um, thank you for allowing us to participate in your work in this way by times, Lord Jesus and that we would be here, hands and feet, here on earth. So uh, keep us ever mindful of this beautiful psalm, that we will never be shaken 
and we will not fear evil tidings as we are steadfastly trusting in you. And uh, we thank you that you are good on your word. Thank you, Lord. Amen. All right, YouTube family, we are going to say goodbye for now. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. We'll be taking up Psalm 113, which is only nine verses long. So there we go. See you later.